nothing is going to change in how we approach this game. We've already had our scouting report in. Uh, these guys know what is expected of them, and I don't expect to see any speed bumps in a row this they've afternoon. Got to, they've got to work on their defense. They've got to work on their rebounding. And this time of year, for every team, it's all about refining the team elements that are going to be, make you successful in conference play. They have a chance to do that this afternoon against Alabama A&M from the SWAC, the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Your officials this afternoon, Ted Valentine, Tony Henderson, Trey Styons. We are underway from the Watsco Center in their home whites. The Hurricanes control the opening tip. Alabama A&M comes out in man-to-man. -man. This is a key theme right here, how they defend ball screens against Chris Likes. Here's Sam Wardenberg, 21 in white. The offensive tip is in by Rodney Miller, the big seven-footer out of Laurelton, New York. Well, what a story and transformation for this young man, and that's great work on the offensive glass. That's going to be another key theme for Alabama A&M, how they match up against the size, in particular against Miller down low. Number 13 in red, that's Cameron Alford. He's the leading scorer and rebounder. He gives it off and has it blocked by Miller. So already a bucket and a block from the Miami big man. DJ Vasilovich does what he does best, nails a three-pointer, and now DJ Vasilovich is number four all-time in three-pointers made in Hurricanes history. He's shooting close to 50% from beyond the arc, and he has got a quick release. Uh, you have to find him as soon as he steps across half court. Otherwise, he can do that. One of the better shooters in college basketball. Now he's only 18 points shy of 1,000 for his career. First bucket for the Bulldogs put in by the grad transfer out of Green Bay, that's T.J. Parham. And he's got a nice, smooth touch from beyond the arc. He's more of a pick, pick and pop guy that time, though, showing the up fake, and that's something we saw them doing this morning and yesterday at practice, him using that one dribble and then pull right up in rhythm. We talked about Miami's struggles defensively. What do they like to do on offense? Well, a lot of times uh, they are a dribbling team as we take a look at the turnover. And the put in by Parham. He's got the first four for the Bulldogs, and it's a 5-4 Miami lead. And back to your early question, Miami, they're more of a dribble drive team, in particular with this guy with the ball likes. That's what he likes to do, get into the paint and then either try to create for himself or others, but a turnovers. It's something you can't do, but right here, again, nice little ball fake. That's a tough shot. But then you see Miller on the glass, and then right here, good ball movement. But then Miller with that improved body, showing off a little hops right there, protecting the rim. Alford with the extra pass in the corner, and that's number 10, Garrett Hicks, with his first bucket of the game, and Alabama A&M, courtesy of back-to-back -back buckets, is on top for the first time, 7-5. That's great ball movement that time. Extra unselfish pass, and... You can't ask for a more wide open look if you're Alabama A&M. Back to back sloppy possessions by Likes. He turned it over and then he had a wild layup. Now Miami in transition, looking to get back on top. Interesting, talking to Coach Laranega this morning at shoot around, he said he tried to get his team to be better off the shoot and catch and realized their strength lies in catch it and drive it before you shoot it. And we're seeing a little bit of that already this afternoon. And it's something that he charts. He talked about that when we spoke with him this morning at shoot around. And he said, look at last year, Virginia, last year, national champs. Uh, they were one of the better teams when it came down to catching and shooting. But Miami's personnel right now, in particular with likes, uh, they're just more set up to be able to beat you off the bounce. Well, we talk about catch and drive versus catch and shoot. Here's an example of that from the Hurricanes. You take a look right here. Okay, pretty good spacing. The ball screen's coming. And then this is what uh, they do best. Uh, beat, break you down off the dribble. That time, Alabama A&M, no help. And that's a wide open, uncontested layup. T.J. Parham has an early five, 78% free throw shooter, knocks his first down of the afternoon. Here's number 22 in red, Jerron Sism. His first game back for head coach Dylan Howard, who's in his second season in Huntsville as Parham hits the second free throw to put Alabama A&M up, up 9-7. And Sism's going to be big for this team. They are really, really young. They actually start five brand new players to the program, four freshmen, one grad transfer in Parham. So getting Sism back is going to help this team a lot. Yeah, and we had a chance to see Coach yesterday work with this young group of Alabama A&M. They're talented, 
Uh, but he said, look, it's going to take some time for them to develop and get that game experience. But uh, he's really excited about this class and he's excited about this group to see how they progress as they get closer to conference play. There's Dylan Howard in his second season, returning to his Alabama basketball roots. He's from Indiana, grew up in Fort Wayne, but spent his college years at UAB playing for Alabama Birmingham and legendary head coach Gene Bartow, and that was a huge influence on his coaching career. It really was, and what a player he was as well, too. A excellent player, uh, one of the all-time greats, and uh, had a nice run overseas as well, too. Played in Taiwan, so again, played for a legend, was a good player in his own likes, and uh, doing a great job with his Alabama and A&M program. We have our first time out on the floor with the Bulldogs up by two on the Hurricanes. Coming up, Hurricane commitments, words to live by from Jim Laranega. Well, those are words to live by from Coach L. Again, if you're just tuning in, Coach Laranaga not on the sidelines this afternoon. He's suffering from back spasms. We hope he's better soon, and they expect him to be better soon, but nothing changes with Chris Caputo running this team, his associate head coach. Those 10 commitments are words to live by. They are, and uh, you know, they're really, I think all coaches have some sort of list like this. I think early on, I'm gonna give them a C uh, thus far because Alabama A&M has had some uncontested shots. And then I think the turnovers early. They've had three turnovers early, a really uh, unforced turnovers. Other than that, I think they've had some nice offensive possessions when they've moved the ball well. Yeah, both teams shooting well to start off as Sam Wardenberg steps to the line for the first time this afternoon. But to your point, those three Miami turnovers, uncharacteristic, have led to five Bulldog points. And when you talk about teams that really value the basketball and value each possession, the Miami Hurricanes are second in the nation in fewest turnovers per game. Yeah, that's an impressive number right there. And it was a focus uh, for them. Again, we spoke with Coach Laranega this morning, and he said, look, we tried to get better in a couple of areas, one of them uh, being more of a team that scores off of catch and shoot as opposed to breaking you down one-on-one -on -one dribble drives. But I would like to come up with the 10 commitments for my children cleaning their room. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe more like one. Yeah, that's one commitment. Take out the garbage, number two. Here's Sism. He tried for the step back, but he's not James Harden, and Teddy Valentine's not buying it. Yeah, and that's, again, going back to those commitments, uh, that's a great job by Miller. Again, out there, moving his feet, contesting shots. Uh, we had a chance last night to be at the Heat game. I had a chance to speak with my former coach, Pat Riley, and I remember he charted in practice uncontested shots. Look, it's... The difference between a good player and a great player, that right there, being able to make contested shots. And that right there is a tough finish. And Sam Wardenberg has back-to-back -back buckets. He has a chance to go to the line and make it a three-point play. And you could see whether Coach Laranega's on the sidelines or it's Coach Caputo calling the plays. This Hurricanes team is intent on driving the basketball this afternoon. And that's where their advantage is. Uh, yes, they're shooting close to 40% from the three-point line coming into this game, but when you have a clear size advantage, uh, don't settle for jumpers. Try to get the ball in that paint area, get to the free throw line, or get some buckets around the basket. And I'm sure it's tempting for the Hurricanes to shoot from three. I mean, we talked about DJ Vasiljevic, one of the best knockdown three-point shooters in the ACC. But someone like Sam Wardenberg, who just shot that free throw, he's a career 38% free throw shooter, or uh, three-point shooter. There's Alford with his first bucket of the game. Gets Alabama A&M back on top, and Alford is from Indiana, Brownsburg, Indiana, to be exact. And it's interesting, the Indiana native, Dylan Howard, saying he wanted to bring some Midwest basketball down <laughs> south. Why did he want to do that? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, where, no, no matter where he's from, uh, he's got talent first and foremost. And he's got that toughness, but uh, Cameron Alfred right now is playing some outstanding ball for Alabama A&M. Came into this game leading them in points per game. Uh, he's coming off a game where he had 18 points uh, their last time out. Uh, and he is an impressive looking freshman. Not only the way he scores the ball, but he does not look like a freshman. Really well built and 
future very bright for him and Alabama A&M. And one thing we saw when we were at Alabama and A&M's practice, and this is probably fairly typical, you could speak to this when you were playing for Boston College under head coach Jim O'Brien, sometimes the head coach is toughest on the lead guard or maybe the best player on the team. Cameron Alford, young, leading this team in scoring, but he was a little bit of uh, the focal point of Coach Howard's consternation yesterday in well, practice. Well, I had a good laugh with my coach, Jim O'Brien, former coach. He and Jim Laranega are very good friends. Yeah. Grew up in Brooklyn, New York together. Played in that New York City. One played for Kuzi. Uh, coach Laranega played alongside Ernie D at Providence. He was a great player himself. But Ernie D. Gregorio, sure. I was joking and uh, look, that freshman year is so difficult because things that you got away with in high school do not work uh, at the Division One level. Uh, in particular, whether you're ACC, uh, or in the swack. So uh, he's doing a lot of coaching, uh, Coach Howard. He said uh, hopefully he doesn't lose his voice, but uh, certainly he's had some young, talented players uh, in this lineup. Kids coming from other programs, he's got 18-year-olds playing for him most, of, first and foremost. And I think it's going to pay dividends, not only later in this year as they get into SWAC conference play, but I also think uh, down the road, two years down the road, where these guys are able to mature, get that experience, and then now they're going to know exactly what it takes uh, to be successful at this level. All right, there's apparently some blood on the court. That's why we have a stoppage of play here with 14.26 to go in the first half, and Alabama A&M up by one on Miami, 12-11. Uh, we'll remind you that Sunday, number 17, North Carolina, is going to play their first regular season game at Carmichael Arena since 1986 when they host the Wofford Terriers. That's coming up at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. And the interesting thing about that is the Dean Dome is being used for December commencement, so they moved it over to Carmichael. And with this being the wrap-up day of Jimmy V Week, Malcolm, it's interesting to note that the very last game played at Carmichael back in 86 was against the NC State Wolfpack. Now, the Tar Heels won that game, but Jimmy Valvano, in all his Jimmy Valvano-ness, <laughs> grabbed the game ball, ran onto the court, and hit a layup himself. He said, I just wanted to do that so I could vote for the rest of my life. I scored the last basket at Carmichael. <laughs> is that not classic Jimmy V? There is only one Jimmy V, and that is so really, that sums him up right there, uh, how he was as a person, uh, as a coach, uh, just put a smile on everybody's face. Uh, what an awesome story that is, and uh, what a nice piece of history uh, that you just explained uh, to our audience. That's and, just awesome. And it doesn't seem like from these numbers you're seeing on your screen, it's going to affect the Tar Heels negatively at all. They actually have a better win percentage at Carmichael than they do in all their years playing at the Dean Smith Center. And just to put a bow on that Jimmy Valvano story, in all his orneriness, Roy Williams was told about that story with Jim Valvano. He said, if I had known he was doing that, I would have gone out and blocked his shot. <laughs> Of course, Williams and Valvano, very good uh, friends going way back. That's the ACC for you. I would have loved to see footage of that interaction right there. Jimmy V trying to go shoot a layup, and Roy coming out trying to break it up with the block. Here's another freshman, Jalen Johnson, and he first hits his first shot of the game. Instant offense from the freshman out of Indianapolis. And we saw them in shoot around and right before the game, all the bigs for Alabama A&M practicing their little jump hooks with the left and right hand. Nice touch for the big fella. Big lineup change now for the Hurricanes. That's number four, Keith Stone. Number five, Harlan Beverly, a freshman. Number two, Isaiah Wong, also a freshman. Beverly gives it up. Here's Stone in his second game for the Hurricanes this season, coming off multiple injuries, he misses, but Sam Wardenberg is leading this team in scoring in the early going. He's got six. Well, that was great execution by Miami. They got a nice look off the dribble drive, but then Wardenberg again, getting on the offensive glass. That's his great work attacking the glass. There's Alford, gives it up to the big man, E.J. Williams. Check that, that's Brandon Houston, number 30 in red. Now eight on the shot clock for the Bulldogs. Cameron Tucker, three in red, controlling. Three to shoot, he's gonna have to hurry. All right now, Alabama a and in a 2-3 matchup zone. Here's Wong all the way to the cup, and Isaiah Wong has his first bucket 
of the afternoon. The freshman out of Piscataway, New Jersey. Well, I like now that's twice Miami has attacked the two three zone, not settling for jumpers. They've attacking it with dribble penetration, getting in the paint that time. Wong, though, took the hit, and then that's excellent body control to finish. Here's Tucker, high hedge by Wardenberg. Leaves the middle open, and Johnson almost able to take advantage of it, but he missed the bunny. Here's Beverly going into the paint. Wardenberg, nice spin move and had it blocked and taken away. The ball is out of bounds, though, says Teddy Valentine, and we'll have another timeout with 11.42 to go, and A&M up by one. Coming up after the break, the Bulldogs are living large. Life on the road and in the SWAC could be tough. Not so much in Miami. We're playing the Los Angeles Lakers last night. Head coach Dylan Howard surprised his team with a trip to an NBA game last night to see the Heat take on LeBron, Anthony Davis and company. And little did they know they were stumbling into Malcolm Huckabee appreciation night <laughs> at the double A. <laughs> yeah, it was great. We both got a chance to go to that Heat Lakers game. And uh, it was great for me to see a lot of my former uh, Miami Heat teammates. I uh, saw Jamal Mashburn, Alonzo uh, Mourning. Got a chance to speak with Coach Pat Riley, who was head coach at the time. Uh, but uh, really, what a great event, though, for this Alabama A&M team uh, to be able to get the, that Heat game. And you know, certainly when you do these road trips, especially around this time, student child, you try to go and either do something historical, whether it's an educational trip when you go on the road, or uh, something like that, a Heat game. And, uh, what a great experience for them. Yeah, I think it goes without saying, there aren't a whole lot of opportunities for a team like Alabama A&M to take in an NBA game coming out of Huntsville, Alabama, but they did just that. As a matter of fact, on the flip side, we were talking to Coach Laranega. They're heading up to Brooklyn to take on Temple for their next game. They're leaving right after the game today because they're going to see a Broadway show. They're all taking the whole Hurricane team to see Hamilton once yeah. they're up in New York. I might be on. I might try to get on that plane. <laughs> Sneak on the yeah, charter I, flight. I might have to try to go incognito and get on that plane. But uh, again, all these coaches, I think, do a really good job uh, trying to do something to either loosen it up, keep it light, or uh, give them uh, some type of educational experience when they get on the road. And uh, they will appreciate that. Uh, especially, again, as you said, getting a chance to do some of the things that all these schools and programs are doing. Just well, an awesome experience. We were talking coming into this game saying, this is a little bit of a, of a trap game for the Miami Hurricanes. Classes are over for the semester, so finals are done. The students are home, basically, so you know you're not going to be coming into a gym that has a ton of energy. Plus, you're going to be practicing a lot harder because you don't have classes, so sometimes you have to wonder are you setting yourself up to be surprised in a game like this? Yeah, and again, we saw that in shoot-around this morning with Coach Blair. Now, as we take a look at uh, Chris Likes, uh, he is one of the most difficult players to match up against. Heart over height. We're going to talk a lot about that. I just love the way he plays. Look at this. Set him up. Think you're going to the left. And this cross right back over to the right. Take the hit. He's got a strong build, although he's small in terms of height. Uh, he's got one of the biggest hearts in college basketball. He is not afraid to go in there. Look at big E.J. Williams, 6'10", 275, freshman out of Middleton, Ohio, gets his first bucket. He came into this program weighing 322 and has lost a ton of weight in just the early part of his young career here. And you could see he's got the talent to match. There's Stone with an answer. Now here's an AM turnover. Likes ahead of the field. And they wave off the shot. The foul on the floor, says Tony Henderson. Well, I think it took Chris Likes about. From the guards for Alabama AM having to check Chris Likes. Well, it's just hard to simulate in, pra in practice. I mean, there's just not too many guys like that as we take a look at Brandon Miller with the deep contested three. That was at the U logo right there. That was beyond NBA, and it was contested, too. That's the third three of the afternoon for the Alabama A&M Bulldogs. They're trailing by just three with coming up on nine minutes to go in the first half. Offensive foul called. That's going to go on Keith Stone, so another turnover for the Hurricanes. 
And right here, let's see. Now that's good defense. Again, that's good defense right there. He's in position. Uh, you have an offensive player running right into him, and that's just good footwork. I don't believe that was a foul. I mean, excuse me, flop at all. That was pretty good D. And Alabama A&M right now is showing some life on both offense and defense. Uh, they are doing an excellent job. Turnover number five for the Hurricanes. But A&M can't turn it into points at the other end. Here comes Likes. Calls his own number, knocks it down, and a chance at a four-point play for Chris Likes. Well, I said it in the open. One of the most explosive guards, not just in the ACC, but in the country right here. Impossible to get up on, and then when you have range like that and you can stop on a dime and pull up uh, from beyond uh, the the three-point line, uh, it's just so difficult uh, to match up against. You mentioned hard over height. I think maybe outside of Marcus Howard from Marquette, one of the top threats to win National Player of the Year, Chris Likes would be in really elite company in terms of being a little bit height challenged, but having tons and tons of heart and talent. Here comes Beverly, the freshman. Five and white, bulls his way to the hole, but comes up empty, chases down the miss, and here's Miami again with numbers. And McGusty makes some pay. Another three-point chance opportunity for the Miami Hurricanes. Cam McGusty's got four and a chance at five. Well, we listed those 10 commitments. Uh, this right here, the commitment to go after loose balls, that's extra possession for your team. Take the hit, end result three-point play opportunity. That's just great uh, work and hustle uh, by Miami getting after the loose balls. Augusti, the redshirt junior, transfer from Oklahoma, spent a couple of years with Lon Kruger over in Norman. It's originally from Katy, Texas. And he misses the chance at the three-point play. It's still a nine-point Hurricanes lead coming up on eight minutes to go in the first. Here's Parham. And Sism, baseline jumper from Jerron Sism. Well, As you would imagine, Malcolm, a number of players on this roster for Dylan Howard coming from the state of Alabama. Sism's one of them. Well, I've been impressed with their spacing. They've gotten a lot of nice looks uh, with their nice spacing on the offensive side, and they're doing a nice job making the extra pass. Alabama A&M. And we've got a foul away from the ball. It's going to go on A&M. The Hurricanes withstood a blow from the 650 career wins, one of 10 active D1 coaches with 650 or more wins. But Chris Caputo has been with Coach Laranega every step of the way for the last 18 years, including his nine years here as a Miami Hurricane. Uh, one of the uh, bright minds uh, in college basketball, uh, a guy that has been with Coach Laranega for 18 seasons. and. Uh, you know, Coach Laranega talks about uh, the importance of having them. All coaches talk about the importance of their staff. And uh, starting at George Mason and then now at Miami uh, has coached uh, some of the best. And, you know, I go back to Shane Larkin, the job that they did with Shane Larkin when he was here, uh, his production, uh, how much he's gotten better. I think player development is a, a key theme. Uh, anytime you're at any of these places, but in particular, uh, you look at what he's done uh, with guys like Shane Larkin, where they come in, not highly recruited, uh, but then they come out and they wind up leaving early because uh, they're playing for a paycheck at the next level. So we were in a, a, a stoppage of play with 7.45 to go. Sam Wardenberg comes out and shoots two technical free throws. What was the story with that? So got a word from Teddy Valentine. It was a hook and hold, a clear hook and hold. Uh, they went to the monitor, reviewed it, and uh, again, that is a point of emphasis as we take a look at Chris Life. Uh, that is a tough catch and shoot. That's something that they worked on uh, during the offseason. That time, nice little uh, rub screen, and Chris Likes raised up high for that one. Nice catch and shoot in rhythm. Now Likes leading all scorers with eight. Again, as you mentioned at the top of this telecast, coming off a career-high 28 points on the road against Illinois in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. He was 11 for 17 from the field in that contest. Seems to be picking up right where he left off in Champaign. Largest lead of the game for the Canes. It's at 10. 
And Isaiah Wong misses short on that pull-up jumper. Here comes Alford, top scorer for Alabama A&M. A little bit of a mismatch. Alford takes advantage over the outstretched arm of Sam Wardenberg. Cameron Alford has five points this afternoon. I'll say it again, future very bright. Uh, he is going to be a big time performer for Alabama A&M. Does not look like a freshman, nor does he play like one. And that is a, just a big time step back pull up jumper. Isaiah Wong can't find the bottom of the bucket again. Here come the Bulldogs. Here's Parham, can't knock down another jumper, and Isaiah Wong wants to run. Wong tries the Euro step and can't get it to go. Good rim run by the big man, Jalen Johnson. Johnson's got his second field goal of the game, and now it's a two-possession ball game with six minutes to go in the first half. And that is exactly what that was, a big running right to the rim. Beautiful pass and execution uh, with the finish. Look at Likes just ripping the ball away, getting the shot off, but coming up short. Here's Cameron Tucker. Likes on all for good matchup and an offensive foul again. A little bit of Chris Likes, the veteran, taking the youngster offered to school. You read my mind. That's exactly what that was. Uh, but Alabama A&M, give them credit. Uh, they're doing a nice job in transition right here. The freshman head up. Alfred, beautiful, unselfish pass and poor transition defense by Miami. And uh, you call it a beautiful run, uh, run right to the rim. And that's just great execution in transition for Alabama A&M. And I can't claim to have all 10 commitments of Jim Laranig and the Hurricanes memorized yet. But if I recall, one of, if not the number one commitment was sprint to set your defense. They didn't do that then, and it cost them an easy bucket. It, it drives coaches crazy. Again, I don't care well, what level you're at. Uncontested shots are typically, obviously, set up by somebody not doing their job on defense. Uh, whether a rotation is late, you don't get back in transition, or you allow dribble penetration. Uh, either way, it breaks down your defense, and the end result is typically a uncontested either layup or jump shot. And uh, certainly, uh, Alabama A&M doing a nice job doing this, uh, getting into the lane right there, though. Likes doing a better job, sliding his feet, keeping Alfred out of the paint. Now the officials are at the scorer's table. Again, this is the third time they've already gone to this table, and they're checking to see if there was an elbow thrown on that last play. If you're just tuning into ACC Network, we have a 33-27 game. The Hurricanes leading the SWAC's Alabama A&M Bulldogs. I will say this, defense at a premium. If you like offense, this is a game to tune into. Alabama A&M shoot 50% from three. They're three for six. Same thing for the Hurricanes, three for six. Both teams shooting in the neighborhood of 50 plus percent from the field. So offenses are working. Defenses are working hard. Yeah, well, I tell you what, uh, as a, a fan watching this, yes, you like it, but I can tell you, neither one of these coaches are enjoying these teams <laughs> uh, shooting that high a percentage uh, against each other. Uh, we're seeing some nice basketball offensively on both ends. Here's Vasilovich. He only has three on that one three pointer. McGusty got it. Nice jump stop in the lane from Cam McGusty. He's got six. Cam Tucker, baseline, five minutes to go in the first half. And Trey Styons whistles Cam Tucker for stepping on the sideline, another inadvertent turnover by the Bulldogs. It'll be Hurricanes basketball. And that goes back to the commitment. Again, ball pressure, uh, doing your job, keeping a dribble penetration to a, a minimum. And that time they were able to come up with a turnover. Seven turnovers for A&M. They're down by eight. McGusty, a little bit of a heat check from Cam McGusty. Keith Stone gets the rebound, but it's taken away by Hicks. Garrett Hicks converts at the other end, and he has five. All right, great job. 
That time shooting the gap off of the offensive rebound that time, and really you don't want to turn it over in that situation, but that's just, again, nice defensive play. No call despite the contact. Vasilovic wanted it, had it taken away by Parham, and a Miami foul, a little bit of a frustration foul by the Canes. Well, this really right here is something that uh, they need to limit Miami uh, turnovers. And right now, Alabama A&M, credit them. They're doing a nice job being active in the passing lanes, and then they're getting out in transition that time, uncontested layup off the turnover. Miami, second in the nation, fewest turnovers allowed. At 10 a game, they already have seven in the first half. Yeah, credit Alabama A&M. Uh, they, again, are doing a nice job shooting gaps and being active in the passing lanes. Here's Brandon Miller, the six-foot junior. Off to the right, nice rebound by Beverly. Looks up, finds McGusty, an easy two at the other end. Well, you can't execute it any better right there. A the ball never touched the ground. And get the defensive rebound, get your head up, and then find somebody running towards the basket. A&M goes inside. Johnson, foul called. That's going to go on Cam McGusty, and Jalen Johnson will go to the line and shoot two. High score ball game in the first half, Huck. We're seeing some nice offense right here. The Canes out in transition. Ball never touched the ground. Miami still on top. A&M Bulldogs. The score is 37-29 with 3.34 to go in the first half. Offense has been the story so far. Both teams shooting it well. Neither team defending particularly well as Johnson misses the free throw. And one slight advantage for Alabama A&M points off of turnovers. Uh, they have nine. I think they've done a nice job getting out in transition off of turnovers as we take a look at a almost near turnover again by Miami. Miami. Not hitting a lot of jump shots, but dominating in the paint. 20 to 12 points in the paint advantage for the Canes. There's a circus shot by Garrett Hicks. He has seven. And wow. the Bulldogs are hanging around. That's just pretty right there. Euro step, come back on the other side, and then lay it up off the glass over the defense with the opposite hand. That time his left. That's a beautiful move. Beverly, nice take to the hole from the freshman Harlan Beverly. ESPN ranked number 55 freshman coming out of Montverde. Johnson, right hook, somehow gets that to go. Everything seems to be falling for the Bulldogs. And we have a timeout on the floor. We're going to take a 30-second break. Stay with us. 2.19 to go. The Canes up by six. And of course, would be Montverde Academy outside of Orlando. Some notable alums recently. R.J. Barrett, Joel Embiid. The list goes on and on. But look at his teammates at Montverde. Prince Achua, who's a star freshman for the Memphis Tigers. They're playing Tennessee. Later on, Omar Payne for University of Florida. And Cade Cunningham, who's one of the top seniors coming out, will be going to Oklahoma State next year. That's just not fair. Uh, that's just not fair at all. Uh, nor is that three by DJ Vasilovich. That is a deep three uh, that he just buried in. It was not uncontested. He is two for two this afternoon from beyond the arc, 18 for his last 29. That's over 60% from three-point range. And a pretty big sample size for DJ Vasilovich. Now fourth all-time in Miami in three-pointers made. Beverly kicks it out to McGusty, who's got eight. McGusty. And they get him for a travel, and that's the eighth turnover for the Miami Hurricanes. Well, sometimes we loosely throw out there beyond NBA range. This one right here would count as beyond NBA range. That's a logo stop three-pointer right there. Uh, that is deep range for Vasilovich. And, you know, speaking with Coach Larinaga this morning, he said, look, he's more than just a three-point shooter because teams are now running out at him so much. Yes, he can knock down threes, but uh, he's turned into 
a, a really good mid-range jumper shooter as well, too, all set up because he has that type of range. And you think he could play at the next level? Oh, you absolutely. You think he can earn some money playing pro ball? Whether here or overseas, if you can shoot it like that, you're going to find a spot. Somebody will be able to use you. All right, nothing but net every Sunday, our weekly basketball studio show. We preview the week, look back at the best games with highlights, analysis, and insight that only we can provide. Tomorrow's show, 6 Eastern, right here on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Some really good ACC games going on this weekend. Syracuse, Georgetown. Georgia Tech is at Rupp Arena to take on Kentucky. Notre Dame and UCLA. Best time of the year right now. You got college football, playoffs coming up. You got NFL, you got college basketball, NBA. It's just uh, really, for me, one of the best times of the year uh, to be a sports fan. Rodney Miller gets the shot in the paint. He'll go to the line and shoot too. Rodney Miller, a seven-foot redshirt junior out of Laurelton, spent a prep year at Oak Hill Academy where he played with a cavalcade of stars. But if you look at him and you say, I wonder what other sports he played, Malcolm, I think you'd be surprised at how athletic Rodney Miller is. Well, this right here sums it up. Uh, I don't think there's too many seven-foot water polo players, but that, in Whoa. fact, is what he was. <laughs> That is just great work right there. You look at that picture, and I I'm going to tell you, nobody would have guessed that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they a might seven have foot one wingspan. That would give you a little bit of an advantage in water polo. We well, were joking earlier today. We were saying maybe he just stood up in the pool and put his feet on the ground. I don't know if that's allowed in water polo or not. I'm not up on water polo rules, but. Rodney Miller, part of the water polo team growing up. Well, I don't know if you're allowed to camp out in the net and be just <laughs> a designated goalie, but I can't imagine too many people getting anything by that wingspan. And with 25.8 left, Dylan Howard's going to have a use it or lose it timeout to call, and he does with his team down by 11. Coming up Wednesday night, we'll have two of the top 10 teams in the nation in our college basketball doubleheader. We start with number nine, Virginia, taking on Stony Brook at 6.30 Eastern. Then it's number one, Louisville, hosting Miami of Ohio. Both games right here on the ACC Network. And obviously, come Wednesday, Louisville will not be number one. They lost earlier this week at MSG to Texas Tech. So the question to you, Malcolm Huckabee, is who do you think is the number one team in the country come Monday? Nobody. Nobody? Now, I know that somebody's going to get a number one after their name. Uh, you can take a pick, one through ten. Uh, you can put a number up there. Uh, but I think it really is one of those years, and we talk about it a lot, where we say, well, nobody's really established himself. I think this year is probably the closest thing we've had to. We don't know who's the number yeah. one team. Uh, originally, you come out, you say, all right, maybe a team like Kansas. Well, that ain't it. Uh, me, at the beginning of the season, I would have said Michigan State because of their veteran leadership. Uh, for me, uh, one of the better point guards in the country. That didn't happen. They got three losses already as we take a look at more great ball movement. But I think to answer your question, there is not a true number one team in the country. Last shot time for the Hurricanes. Three to go. Another deep three by Vasilovich. It looked good off his hand, but it hit the back iron. And we go to halftime with the Miami Hurricanes up by nine on the upstart Alabama A&M Bulldogs. Your score at the break is 44. 35. Chris Likes and Cam Augusti have combined for 16. As we go to a timeout here, halftime coming up on the ACC Network, the Canes. There weren't many misses for either team in the first half. 51.6% to be exact from the field for the Hurricanes, but 57.7% by Alabama A&M. They led early on. They trail by nine to start the second half. And Alabama A&M with their road red uniforms controls the opening possession of the second half. In that first half, Alabama A&M had nine points off of turnovers. Uh, I think that is uh, going to be a number that needs to go down. And then uh, that right there, the uncontested shots, uncharacteristically, again, we talked about those ten commitments, one of those contesting shots. Start off the second half, that's a uncontested layup given out off of out of bounds underneath. 
Here's Chris Likes. The seven footer Miller. Seven on the shot clock. Here's McGusty. Off the mark, and EJ Williams clears for the Bulldogs. Here's Cameron Alford. Kept in check in the first half. He averages over 14 a game, top scorer for Dylan Howard's Alabama AM squad. And the big guy, EJ Williams, goes up strong and draws a foul, and Williams will go to the line and shoot. He did a nice job giving a little head fake that time, and we've seen the Alabama AM bigs use the jump hook. Uh, both with the left and also right, but E.J. Williams doing a nice job establishing post position. A good post entry pass that time for Alabama a and The big left-hander, only a 50% free throw shooter. But when you talk to Coach Dylan Howard about his young big man, he says there really aren't a lot of guys his size in our conference. So once conference play starts for the Bulldogs, even though they were preseason picked eighth in the league, he thinks they're going to jump up and surprise a lot of people. Yeah, and he's Williams done a nice job working on his body, shed a lot of pounds, much more agile now. And again, that's two impressive looking freshmen uh, for Coach Howard and Alabama A&M. Wardenberg. And a foul on the floor. Sam Wardenberg had seven points in the first half. Couple of buckets, a few free throws. And it'll be Miami basketball under their own basket, 20 on the shot clock. And I liked his energy and effort, in particular on the glass, Wardenberg, in that first half. Now McGusty with a seam. And he missed a close range. Here comes Hicks. Baseline jumper, off the mark. Weak side rebound to Wardenburg. Likes with the crossover. And the hesitation move. What a move by Chris Likes. Well, he faked out about three people on Alabama A&M. And again, he's just so shifty, uh, so difficult uh, to stay in front of. Uh, you almost have to try to double him, but he can split that as well, too. Showing why he was preseason picked to the second team, all ACC. Look at this. Beautiful crossover then. The whoop, hesitation move. <laughs> blows by a couple of A&M defenders and gets the easy bucket. Well, that's just unfair as a big trying to come out and hedge. And uh, look at this right here. Rich, I think that is in your game right there. See, I can't pull that off. No. I just got injured watching that. I mean, it's just painful to watch that guy. And uh, we talked about his size, but uh, I think the big number for him, size of heart. And he is just fearless on the court as we take a look at Wardenberg again. Great post position. And I think that's an area that Miami needs to attack. Uh, they have a clear size advantage uh, at that four spot. Alford pulls up, gets it back. Now gives it off to the big man, Williams. Off to the left with the jump hook, and Likes comes away with it. Streaking down the right side, and a foul is called on Garrett Hicks. Wow. Interesting to note that Chris Likes is undersized in any league, but especially in the ACC. You look on the other side of the court, and you see a handful of Alabama A&M Bulldogs who are about six feet and under just like Chris Likes is. Well, I can tell you, none of them that are as fast as him, and I don't care what conference you're in, there are very few people in college basketball as fast as Chris Likes. Likes coming in, averaging just a shade under 15 a game. He has 10 so far today. Trying for 13, but he's short on the three. Here comes Hicks in transition. And the blow by by Garrett Hicks. Hicks's first bucket of the second half gives him nine for the game. And Chris Caputo not happy with that defense right there. An uncontested layup. I'm sure he will address that in the next dead ball. McGusty wide open, came up short on the three. Another transition chance for the Bulldogs. No whistle. After the contact, here comes McGusty. Vasilovic, automatic. And Rich, that is all set up by McGusty. Unselfish play, 
in transition. He could have easily jacked up that shot, make the extra pass uh, to your teammate, one of the better shooters, not just in the ACC, but in the country. And that's just beautiful execution in transition and unselfish play. Matching the largest lead of the game for the Canes. They're up 11. Good hands by Vasilovich, knocking it out of bounds with nine on the shot clock. And again, in transition, you can't execute it any better. Draw the defender, and then you kick it out to one of the better shooters in college, a DJ Vasilovich, and that's just a great transition offense by Miami. Now 12 points shy of 1,000 for his career. What an up and under move by EJ Williams, showing the full offensive repertoire. Kevin McHale would be proud of that up and under right no there. No doubt. Uh, that is great ball fake, and I've been impressed with his footwork as well, too, and his ability to establish post position. And Alabama a and doing a nice job entering the ball to him in the post. And Williams picks it off. Here's Hicks. Fight for the loose ball out of bounds. It's going to stay with the Bulldogs. And we have our first timeout of the second half. Alabama A&M with a puncher's chance on the road against the Canes. It's one and all. Classes are out. Finals are over at the U but a decent crowd on hand inside the Wasco Center to watch their Hurricanes look for their sixth win on the season. Going up against a very tough Alabama A&M Bulldogs team out of the SWAC. Hurricanes lead by nine, coming up on 15 minutes to go in the game. 10 on the shot clock. Inside, Johnson, elbow jumper, got it. Jalen Johnson has 10. Well, what patience that Alabama A&M has shown. Uh, right there, again, good spacing, uh, not forcing any shots, probed the defense, and then got a nice foul line jumper. And all set up by excellent spacing. Yeah, they've impressed me with their maturity on the offensive end. Taking their time, surveying, like you said, probing the defense. And this is a team with a ton of of fresh faces. I mean, freshmen up and down this roster for Dylan Howard, which is an oddity, to be honest with you, in the SWAC. They'll be good this year. A couple years, if they stick together as a unit, look out. Well, the oddity now, unfortunately, though, is uh, across all conferences, you see it now with the grad transfers and yeah. guys uh, in the transfer portal. But uh, again, he feels really uh, good, and he should feel good about uh, his team's uh, growth as they get closer to SWAC play, uh, they have great balance. And what I mean by that is, is they have a really good guard, uh, but their bigs uh, have impressed me how they've operated down low in the post. And just to put it in perspective, SWAC, obviously, teams don't travel all that much. They're, they're busing to a lot of their games in conference. But Dylan Howard was quick to tell us, for a lot of these freshmen, this could be the very first time coming to Miami that they were ever on an airplane. It's a whole new world for a lot of these youngsters, and they are adapting quickly on the fly and certainly showing out today in the Hurricanes game. Well, a couple guys I played with from Detroit, Michigan now, uh, one of them an assistant with uh, Michigan, Howard Isley. I remember our first road trip as we take a look at more great footwork uh, by E.J. Williams, but... Uh, one of our first road trips we didn't make or we were almost down one player because he had never been on a plane before and didn't realize we flew to these games. E.J. Williams has impressed. 6'10", 275, nimble with the puppies. Well, look at this footwork right here. Again, nice little spin move. And that is just great footwork, body control, but the touch at the end to be able to go up and finish uh, that time with the right hand, uh, I can again really see them being a very difficult team to match up against uh, because of his size and ability to put the ball in the hole around the basket. 14 10 to go, the lead for the Hurricanes, just six. Again, Alabama AM lost their first five games, but they've won their last two back at home against Troy and against Jackson State. 
And they're giving the Hurricanes a run for their money here inside the Wasco Center. Here's Brandon Miller, two in red. Gives it up to the leading scorer, Alford. Now seven to shoot. Miller pulls the trigger. Short and the rebound to Wong. Loose ball, who wants it? A&M comes away with it. Fresh possession for the Bulldogs. Alford steps through, bounce pass to the big man, never a great idea, and it's a turnover for A&M. Oh, good recovery that time by Miami. They have come up with a steal. Here's Vasilovich. Miller, spin move, left hand, yes. Rodney Miller has his first field goal of the second half, six on the game. Well, another guy, uh, we talked about his transformation, got himself in a much better shape coming into this season. And uh, you can see the improved agility and footwork. That's a tough finish in the lane. That jumper falls. And AM is hanging around. Cameron Alford. Beverly had it knocked out of his hands as he drove the lane, and a foul's called on AM. Well, my daughter's in the nutcracker around Christmas time. We're seeing some ballet like moves from a pair of big men today. I mean, the footwork is just impressive right there. That is a difficult shot, and uh, Rodney Miller made that look easy with the left hand. Great body control, but I think uh, the most impressive piece is their footwork. You're absolutely right. Up on their toes, spin moves, take some hits, and then that time finishing with the left. Interesting to see what happens now with AM as Dylan Howard goes to his bench. And the two players who were just dominating on the floor, EJ Williams, the big man, Cameron Alford, their leading scorer coming in, both take a breather side by side. If you tuned in thinking this was going to be a blowout, think again. Rich Hollenberg, Malcolm Huckabee, the rest of the ACC Network crew here witnessing Alabama A&M trying to hang around and make a game of this where eight minutes into the second half and Miami's only up eight. Another three, this time by number three, Cameron Tucker. And that's set up by T.J. Parham. Again, uh, that's excellent execution. Little wheel cut, get into the lane, break down the D, and then that's a nice diagonal pass. All he had to do was catch and let it fly. Five for 12 from three-point range are the Bulldogs today. Here's Wong. Had it blocked by Sism. Out of bounds, it'll stay Miami basketball. We have a timeout on the floor. Alabama A&M knocking down shots and hanging in with the big boys. Number three, four three. Cameron Tucker, he's got five, and the lead is just five. Out of town, timeout, and well, let's take a look at those big man moves. First from E.J. Williams, then from Rodney Miller. Well, this right here by Williams, that's just a big time move. Set him up outside the paint, and then you work your way in. Miller said, I can do that too, right back at you. Uh, both guys have been uh, on their body, and uh, you can see the end result, better agility and ability to finish around the basket. Those are two big time moves. Vasilovich at the line for the first time this afternoon. As you can imagine, with as pure a stroke as he has, he's also a knockdown free throw shooter. A perfect nine for nine on the season so far. Those two make it a seven point Miami lead, 11 and a half to go. Skip pass in the corner, not this time. 
but AM fighting for the loose ball. They grab it and Sism called for the travel. Well, it was a good look for Alabama AM. They don't get it, but Sism almost came up with another offensive rebound. That's the 10th AM turnover. Here's Wardenburg. Had a clear path to the basket. Miller saves it. And McGusty can't pay it off. Bulldogs want to run. Tucker, all by himself, takes it to the hole. Cameron Tucker has seven. Well, we talked about Chris Light's speed. That's pretty impressive by Tucker getting out in transition. And that was just a one-man fast break. He just beat everybody up the court, including Chris Likes. The freshman out of Birmingham, highly directed, de uh, decorated in his high school career out of Winona High School. Nice take by McGusty. Hangs and hits. He's in double digits with 10. Somehow this Miami defense has to solve the A&M offense. And Alabama A&M's offense coming in was quite frankly one of the worst in the nation. They were in the high 300s out of 353 Division I schools. They were only averaging about 61 points a game coming. And that is not the case though. You were right. They look really good right here. Just in transition. That's just a one man a fast break uh, beating one of the fastest players in college basketball up the court and Again, I go back to their balance. They've uh, been well shooting the ball outside another dribble drive, but uh, they've done most of their damage in the paint in this game. Rebound by Miller, his third of the afternoon. Here's Likes. Again, another circus move by Chris Likes. Not only one of the fastest in college hoops, one of the most electrifying, and he put it on display there. Well, Sports Center, I think we got a top 10 nominee right here. Chris Likes, impossible to keep out of the paint. That is a big time split and then finish at the rim by one of the most explosive players and exciting players in college. 11 for 17 from the field. Gave him 28 points against Illinois. That was back on December 2nd, their last game. And here he is moving into another 20-point effort. He's got 12, looking for 13 if he completes the three-point play. I mean, that's just not fair. I mean, that's just like a video game right there, trying to stay in front of that guy. Good luck. A Baker's dozen for likes extends the Miami lead to double digits. They try a corner three and get it again. Another triple by the Bulldogs. Garrett Hicks has his second three of the afternoon. He's at a dozen. Well, what they're doing is they're overextending on the high ball screen, Miami. They're overhelping, and Alabama AM with their spacing, they're doing a nice job finding people in the corner. Easy bucket by McGusty. McGusty with 12, Likes with 13. The lead is nine for Miami. That was a better job of Likes staying home on that dribble drive and not giving any open jumpers up in the corner. And there's another nice move by Alabama A&M. Walter Jones Jr., a seldom used youngster, comes in and gets a bucket. Alabama A&M going, switching up their defense. They're going to a 3-2 matchup zone. Nice feed, McGusty, Wardenburg got fouled. You can't execute any better against that zone if you're Miami. But right here again, gamble on that wing pass and then no rotation. Good body control, but again, that's another uncontested layup for Alabama A&M set up off the ball reversal. And Coach Caputo, I know he is not going to be happy with that rotation on that last play. Warrenberg knocks down the first. And now Alford and Miller will go to the bench for Dylan Howard. And I guess you would consider this a feather in the cap for the Bulldogs. Their leading scorer, Cameron Alford, now goes to the bench with four fouls. He's been held in check only eight points this afternoon, and yet the Bulldogs' offense is clicking on all cylinders. Yeah, it's been a team effort. 
of this afternoon thus far for Alabama a and Now the freshman Johnson. Another freshman in Hicks will try a three. Wardenburg grabs the rebound. That's seven boards for Sam Wardenburg. Not this time for likes. Nice look inside, and Jalen Johnson benefits. A dozen for Johnson. And he's one off his season high of 13. He's got 12 against the Canes. And that's a great use of the ball fake that time. He basically looked like he was going to pass the ball to the opposite wing. Found the big wide open underneath the basket. There's seven and a half minutes left in this game, and Alabama A&M has matched their scoring average for the season already. And a bailout foul by the Bulldogs on Beverly. He had three on the shot clock before that foul was called. 7.21 to go. The Canes clicking on offense, struggling on defense. Credit Alabama A&M. Excellent ball control movement, and they are still in this game. not on the sidelines this afternoon with back spasms, but we saw him this morning at shoot-around before those back spasms flared up. And one of the great stories when you look back on sports and its connection to the V Foundation and how sports can affect lives in such a positive way, I read a story about Jim Laranega. He heard about a former Hurricane player who didn't even play on the varsity. He was a freshman on the basketball team back in the the 1940s and back in 2015 he got a call from that man's daughter-in-law guy's name was Jim Palma and his daughter-in-law informed the basketball team that Jim was unfortunately dying of cancer coach Laranega called him and had a conversation with him so much so that his daughter-in-law said that he lit up and it was the happiest she's seen him in years and that's just a small way that sports intersects with life in general and can really have an impact positively on you and shows what kind of man Jim Laranig is. Well, again, I couldn't say it any better than what you just described in terms of what type of person he is. Uh, and I, I think the big thing is uh, putting a smile uh, on uh, this family's face and uh, we go back to uh, his methods on the road with these young men playing baseball, but making up a makeshift baseball field in a hotel uh, where he said, look, I just felt like our guys needed to lighten up a little bit. And uh, again, uh, really take your hat off to him. Uh, he really just does a phenomenal job creating that family atmosphere with this program. But uh, that story in itself uh, really just kind of sums him up. Well, Coach L's at home watching, nursing that bad back. And right now he can't like what he sees. The Hurricanes are up just six with six and a half to go on what has proven to be a very game tough, young Alabama A&M team. Shot was made by McGusty, did they count it? They do, and Cam McGusty will have a chance at a three-point play. Right here, again, looks like it's away from the ball. Down low you have yeah, a lot of activity in the paint right there, and looked like somebody was trying to back block out Wardenburg, and that's a big change of events for Alabama A&M. Yeah, you get a three-pointer and a chance at two free throws because Miami's already in the double bonus. They're shooting two free throws on every subsequent Alabama A&M foul. Wardenburg hits the first. Nothing but net. Every Sunday is our weekly basketball studio show. We'll preview the week and look back at the best games from last week. Highlights, analysis, insight, like only the ACC Network can provide. Tomorrow's show is at 6 Eastern right here on the ACC Network. Warrenberg one for two from the line, so the lead is 10. Coming up on six minutes to go. Here's Williams. 
up and under. E.J. Williams has been really impressive this afternoon. And execution by Alabama, again, off the pick and rolls. That's where they've had their most success, that high ball screen in the middle of the floor. Excellent spacing that time, though. That's a beautiful entry pass in the post. And there's an easy two for the Canes. It looks like Chris Likes, though, is limping after that play, and looks like he's going to get out of the game, but that is something we will definitely watch. Came up limping after he made the beautiful pass. Hicks lost it with eight on the shot clock. Now five to shoot. Tucker squeezes it off, but misses, and the weak side rebound to McGusty. Baseline, Beverly. Blocked, but a foul's called on AM. Let's take a look at what happened or might have happened to Chris Light's last time down. The yeah, right here again. Uh, don't see much there from that angle. Let's see. Yeah, it looked like he yeah. just jammed his foot. And I know having had those happen, sometimes those things look innocent, but they are very painful. And certainly, when you cut as much as he does in a game, that definitely will impact you. And they're going to get him out of the game. I'm sure the training staff will take a look at that. But Well, out of all the unique things about Chris Likes, and you could tell how unique he is by just looking at him. One of them is he wears a different color sneaker on either foot. So all he has to do is point to his foot and say, it's it's the orange one, coach. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the sneaker games is just, uh, by a lot of these young men, is just off the chart as we take a look at another three uh, for Alabama A&M. Again, still hanging around in this game. That's their seventh triple of the afternoon. Wardenberg can't grab it with a one-hand rebound. Here comes Tucker. 76-68, Hurricanes lead. Tucker wanted Williams to take it. He hesitated, almost threw it away. Here's Alford. He lost it. Beverly, aggressive, had it partially blocked and lost it. Spin move Miller. Out to Parham. The one more. Alford. Too strong. Wow, that's a good look, though, for Alabama AM. Off great ball movement. Look at both clubs diving on the floor for the loose ball. And Alford cherry picking at the other end. Cameron Alford in double digits with 10. It's a two possession ball game with 3.50 to go and a timeout on the floor. I, I think it was number four, if I'm correct, and I think that's contesting shots. Uh, Alabama A&M has gotten some open shots in this game, and a lot of that credit Alabama A&M. Uh, their spacing has been good, but I think they've broken them down off the dribble and some turnovers. We have another timeout on the... Thank you, Kelsey, Rich Hollenberg, Malcolm Huckabee from the Watsko Center. Good news for Hurricanes fans. Chris Likes is back out on the floor. He had to take a breather, which looked like his left ankle, the orange sneaker, left foot ankle area was bothering him, but he's back out on the floor for the final 339, and they're gonna need him. They're only up five. Yeah, he's obviously the heart and soul of his team. He does for them with the ball in his hands, and certainly that is a great sight for Miami fans to see him back out on the court. Uh, they're just a different team with not him ha being in the lineup. Likes has 13 this afternoon, but the Canes have been led so far by Cameron McGusty, who now has a game-high 16 points today. The lead is just seven for the Canes. Alabama A&M, one of the lowest scoring offenses in all of Division I basketball, has not looked like it at all this afternoon. Para blocked by Wardenburg. Here's McGusty in the open court. Nice step through by Cam McGusty. 18 for McGusty, the lead's back up to nine. Well, 
that last possession on defense might have been Miami's best defensive possession of this game and the end result they were able to get out in transition. All through. And likes the littlest guy on the court grabs the rebound. Well, he might be the smallest in terms of stature, but measuring heart, I don't think anybody out there on the court has a bigger one. He is just fearless. Vasilovic off the dribble, knocks it down. And Chris Likes was holding up three fingers right as he released it. Four triples on the game for DJ Vasilovic. And just like that, the lead's back to a dozen. Parham might have had that one partially blocked by Beverly. Yeah, great closeout, and I like the adjustment. You can tell Coach Chris Caputo was definitely talking to his guys about contesting shots, getting back to those commitments uh, that they read off before each practice. And, and defense has certainly led to offense since that timeout. The Canes are on a 7-0 spurt. Uh, and this is where it starts right here. Again, that might have been their best team defensive effort and then they're able to get out in transition. Beautiful Euro, eyes on the rim the whole time. And again, it just helps your offense uh, when you are able to set up your defense, get stops. Likes in a phone booth, gives it up to McGusty for three. 21 now for Cam McGusty. One wow. shy of his career high. Swatted out of bounds by Wardenburg. Largest lead of the game for Miami with a buck 44 to go. I mean, this is just right here. Again, I called it. It's like a video game. Trying to guard Chris Likes. I mean, he's spinning. He's splitting teams, uh, double teams, uh, and then he's able to make these passes. That's just a great individual play. Hit the B button. Hit the B button. Uh, that's just not fair. Jalen Johnson with the baby hook. Season high for the freshman out of Indianapolis. 14 for Johnson. Time running out for Alabama A&M, who has been nothing short of impressive this afternoon. On the road against an ACC team. They're going to be a force in the SWAC. And a foul called on Miami. It'll be A&M basketball. Now, you like the effort by Beverly. Uh, but in that situation, you got to understand uh, time and score certainly do not want to stop the clock. Well, tonight the All-ACC team will be back after Xavier Wake Forest men's basketball to break down the day with highlights, analysis, interviews, and everything else. Starts at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. No one covers the ACC like we do, and you can see it all streaming live on the ESPN app. And that studio crew will have a lot to talk about. Georgia Tech taking on Kentucky at Rupp, UCLA, Notre Dame. Syracuse Georgetown, one of the great rivalries in college basketball. All that and more coming up later on the ACC Network. Under a minute to go from Coral Gables. Miami looking to hang on and escape for their sixth win of the year. Vasilovich slow to get up. And Wardenburg rips another rebound. Sam Wardenburg has nine boards on the game to go along with his 11 points. Yeah, he's been impressive. I talked about it after the first half. I, I really was impressed with his activity on both glasses, offensively and defensively. Uh, he was big for them in this game. Well, the crowd is cheering, but at times it was a white knuckle affair as DJ Vasilovic puts the final nail in the coffin, the exclamation point with his fifth triple of the afternoon. 17 for Vasilovic, who's now just four points shy of 1,000 for his career. And this is just uh, one of the better shooters uh, in the ACC. And I'm going to say in the country as well, too. Shooting close to 50% from beyond the arc coming into this game. And another logo three-pointer. I mean, that's well beyond NBA three-point range right there uh, for Vasilovic. DJ Vasilovic, five for six from three-point range this afternoon. And balanced scoring, that's another hallmark of a Jim Laranega team. He loves having four to five people in double digits every game. Why? Because it means they're sharing the basketball. 
Well, offensively, I think when they didn't turn the ball over, you have to be impressed. I think defensively, uh, certainly there were some uh, breakdowns, but at the end of the day, uh, Miami has done enough uh, to come out of here uh, with the victory against Alabama A&M. Well, it was not a given this afternoon. Chris Caputo filling in for Coach Laranega on the sidelines. We wish him well. Hopefully he returns quickly after back spasms, but Miami holds on for a 14-point win against Alabama A&M. 88-74, your final from the Watsco Center in Coral Gables. For everybody here at the ACC Network, including my broadcast partner, Malcolm Huckabee, this is Rich Hollenberg saying enjoy the rest of your Saturday afternoon.